Welcome to Past People, please consider subscribing to support my channel. The Death of Kaiser Wilhelm II In June 1941, after many years of living in seclusion, Kaiser Wilhelm II, often identified as a primary instigator of the First World War in Europe, passed away in the Netherlands. He held animosity towards numerous European countries and witnessed the outbreak of the Second World War on the continent. The Nazis, who had gained control of Germany, grappled with how to handle the former emperor's remains. Kaiser Wilhelm II was the final emperor of Germany, instrumental in elevating the nation to great power status, which contributed to the onset of the First World War. Interestingly, he was the eldest grandchild of Queen Victoria of Britain. He wielded influence following Victoria's death, even mandating the casting of a death mask of his grandmother's face against her wishes. After the First World War, he fled Germany and lived the rest of his life in exile. But what is the account of his demise? Kaiser Wilhelm was born on the 27th of January 1859, the eldest offspring of Crown Prince Frederick of Prussia and Vicky, Queen Victoria's daughter. His birth was fraught with complications, resulting in a withered arm that he tried to conceal. In 1881, after a period of military service, Wilhelm wed Augusta Victoria, the Princess Schleswig Holstein, and together they had seven children. In 1888, Wilhelm's father ascended the throne as Frederick III, but passed away shortly thereafter, making Wilhelm the Kaiser of Germany at the age of 29. Admiring Otto von Bismarck, he compelled Bismarck's resignation within two years and believed that bolstering the armed forces was paramount for Germany. He looked towards nations like Britain with intense envy for their navy and empire. Subsequently, Wilhelm expanded the navy and pursued an aggressive policy of colonisation, fostering a desire among Germans to establish colonies in various countries. He expressed support for Britain's adversaries. However, following Archduke Franz Ferdinand's assassination in 1914, Wilhelm encouraged Austria to take action against Serbia, providing them with financial backing in case of war. Unfortunately, Wilhelm's naivety about the repercussions of his actions led to the outbreak of the First World War, resulting in the loss of millions of lives across Europe. Many British soldiers who fought had unclear motivations, and Wilhelm's actions brought suffering and upheaval throughout Europe. He found himself somewhat excluded from the military hierarchy, and on occasion he disrupted opportunities for peace by inciting war. His role was nothing short of that of a warmonger. In 1918, the entry of American forces into the conflict coincided with a period of severe suffering for Germany. The years of trench warfare had drained their manpower and resources, resulting in the collapse of the German military. Consequently, Kaiser Wilhelm II abdicated the throne, prompted by uprisings in Berlin and the recognition that he must relinquish the imperial crown. Although he initially desired to retain the title of King of Prussia, he eventually agreed to a complete abdication. On the 10th of November 1918, he crossed the border into exile in the neutral Netherlands by train. His cousin, King George V of Britain, dubbed him the greatest criminal in history, and the British Prime Minister sought his execution. Throughout his exile, Wilhelm penned his memoirs, spending the subsequent two decades entertaining guests and staying abreast of European affairs. Notably, he remained one of the wealthiest individuals in Germany, even after abdicating. In the early 1930s, he held hopes that the Nazis would facilitate the monarchy's restoration and name his grandson as a new Kaiser. However, Hitler had different intentions, blaming Wilhelm for Germany's darkest days. Wilhelm welcomed Nazis into his home, but he eventually condemned Nazi rule, stating that, We have ceased to live under the rule of law and everyone must be prepared for the possibility that the Nazis will push their way in and put them up against the wall. Witnessing the persecution of Jews in Germany deeply shocked him, and he admitted feeling ashamed to be German. He critiqued Hitler, noting that a nation is built by families, traditions and values, not solely by military might. 
He once leaned towards believing in national socialism, but became disheartened as Hitler eliminated wise and outstanding Germans, leaving a regime of thugs. He criticised Hitler's ability to secure victories without bringing genuine honour and safety to the nation. He lamented that Germany, once a nation of artists and soldiers, had become a realm led by manipulative deceivers and fanatics. He did recognise Germany's initial military achievements at the outset of the Second World War. He corresponded with Hitler, conveying congratulations and expressing hope that under Hitler's leadership, the German monarchy would be fully restored. However, the Nazis' conquest of the Netherlands in 1940 brought them to his doorstep. At an advanced age, Wilhelm withdrew from the public life and declined an offer of asylum from Churchill to spend his remaining days at Hughesdorn. In his final years, bitterness towards the British and Jews consumed him. By June 1941, he was gravely ill. In his last week, he battled intestinal issues and took to his deathbed at the age of 82. Despite his severe illness, he showed significant rallying just a few days before his passing. His family gathered by his bedside, leaving as he appeared to improve. Yet on the night of the 4th of June 1941, he suffered a pulmonary embolism and lapsed into unconsciousness. Although his heart continued to beat, he never regained consciousness. He was pronounced dead at 11.30am and at the time of his passing, his wife, his only daughter and his grandson were the sole members of his family that were present. The burial of Kaiser Wilhelm II became a major issue. Initially, Hitler sought to bring Wilhelm's body back to Berlin for a state funeral during wartime. However, Hitler realised that this might be perceived as a claim to the throne, serving his propaganda purposes. Kaiser Wilhelm had stipulated that his body should not return to Germany unless the monarchy was restored, a request that was honoured. The Nazis in the Netherlands agreed to a modest funeral with a small gathering of mourners, including German field marshals, flying aces from the First World War and military advisers. Despite Wilhelm's occasional criticism of Hitler, he explicitly stated his aversion to Nazi symbols, such as a swarovski, being displayed at his funeral. Hitler disregarded this request, turning the funeral into a near-Nazi rally adorned with Schwarzkis everywhere, completely disregarding Wilhelm's wishes. He was laid to rest in a small mausoleum on the grounds of the house where he had lived in exile for decades. Today this site is considered a place of pilgrimage. Despite passing swiftly within a matter of hours, Kaiser Wilhelm II endured suffering in his final moments on earth. What is truly distressing is that he spent his later years in the Netherlands living comfortably while being accountable for a conflict that tore millions of men from their homes and families. In British villages today, the names of those lost in the First World War are etched into church walls, a testament to the lives taken by a conflict they had no part in. Kaiser Wilhelm's serene last year starkly contrasts the suffering and sacrifices of countless individuals during World War I. His comfort during this period seems to mock the anguish endured by so many. His potential culpability in the conflict's horrors is a topic of debate. Unlike the major aggressors of the Second World War, who faced trials of executions, Kaiser Wilhelm managed to evade such consequences, passing away in the tranquility of his Dutch palace chamber. He is often regarded as a heedless leader who propelled the world into some of its most sombre times. Thank you for watching, please subscribe to my channel to support these videos.